How long did you stay as a zero viewer, Andy? Listen, dude. The Asmongold struggle right at the very fucking beginning of streaming, that was a grind. That was a fucking grind. So I was back, uh, and not, not even sure it was YouTube. Like YouTube, because whenever I started streaming, I already had like maybe the first stream I ever did, I had 250 viewers. Right? And, and also, that's actually not even true either. Um, I did do one stream before then, and this was in like 2009, or not 2009, excuse me, 2011. And I turned on my stream and I was doing uh, Time with Sia, uh, bloody coin farming, because I thought that'd be funny for people to watch. And so anyway, I had zero viewers. Zero viewers, the big old fucking goose egg. I go up to a one, I get one viewer. I'm like, what up, dude? Calls me gay and he leaves. the fuck's that shit for? What the fuck did I do? What the fuck did I do? What the fuck did I do that for? Why, why, why you gotta do that to me, man? Uh, yeah, he's like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, actual, yeah, like, legitimate fours and dead. And, uh, yeah, I went up to one. That was me? Yeah, damn, I, I didn't know I had so many viewers back then. So, uh, no, anyway, so, yeah, I, I used to, uh, obviously not get that many viewers, right? I got 250 viewers, and then I did, like, three or four more streams, and then by then I was getting up to, like, a thousand viewers. And then, uh... Then I started streaming more regularly. I got up to like 2,000, 3,000 viewers, 4,000. And then I was climbing up there pretty fast. I was getting up to like, you know, 8,000, 9,000 viewers. I never hit 10K until like uh, t t t TOS though. But I would hit like maybe 5K, 6K pretty regularly. And this was all in like maybe the, the span of, I don't know, maybe like two or three months. And uh, then Legion came out and I changed my streaming times and my stream saw a bit of a decline. And uh, I, I did that for a while. Then let's see. Then Tuma Sargeras came out. Then, like, I got 25,000 viewers. I got 25,000 fucking viewers on that first day. Which is, like, I was at the top of Twitch. Like, 25k, especially, like, you know, there are more organic users now on Twitch. So, viewer accounts just get higher over as time goes on. Because Twitch becomes a bigger website. So, it's like back in the day, like in 2011, think about how big of a deal it would be if somebody had 20,000 viewers, right? Whereas now, it's still a really, really big deal. But it's something that you see every day. Uh, each time it's a big deal, but it's it's less it's more common uh, than it was. So uh, 1K viewer streams, it's not the grind at all, dude. Wait, 1K after three streams, not the grind at all, dude. Well, that's what I'm saying, right? I'll 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 go into that again. So whenever I was doing YouTube, that was whenever I really had to grind, because I did YouTube a, a lot farther before streaming. I started YouTube in 2014, and I was literally like I made the subscriber celebration video at 100 subs, okay. Like, I, I did a thousand, you know, and all the other uh, sub goals, right? And all I did back then was make wow guide videos. That was all I did. And uh, I would literally just Google something, and I'd be like, this guide sucks, I can do it better. And then I'd go up there and I'd do it better. And that was how I would do it. Viewer inflation, aka one viewer in 2011, is worth four viewers in 2009. I don't know about viewer inflation or anything like that, but uh, there's more people. I don't, I don't think it's that big either. Uh, but there are a lot of people, obviously, that are watching now uh, that weren't back then. And uh, so anyway, let's see here. Uh, it's about building a fan base elsewhere and sending them to your Twitch. So I actually think that's probably the safest and smartest way to stream. Uh, is that if you want to build a fan base or anything and get into streaming, you should probably build a fan base somewhere else and then have them like go over and watch you on Twitch. And the reason for that is that discoverability on Twitch is based primarily on your viewer count. So if you can go from like zero viewers to 20 viewers, if you can be at 20 viewers, like oh, 0 0.0, 0 0.0, 0 0.00, 0 0, 0 0.002k Andy, right? Uh, you know, big deal, right? But it is a, uh, it's a big number because it puts you above like 90% of everybody else. Like if you have 20 viewers, you're probably in the top 10%. I'm not even kidding. Like there are so many viewers, scroll down and you're going to see thousands of streams that are at like eight viewers, nine viewers, 12 viewers, one viewer, none viewers, no viewers. Imagine streaming to zero people. That's going to be a bad time. So if you're able to do that, discoverability on YouTube, for example, is a lot better than discoverability on Twitch because people search YouTube for content and they're looking for that content and not necessarily the streams themselves. So discoverability on Twitch, uh, sorry, on YouTube is a double-edged sword. So it helps you get discovered more easily, but also you're more limited by the content in which you're creating 
in a way that on Twitch that you're not able to be limited in that same way. Because on YouTube, people, it's so much driven by user searches and user queries that you don't really have a lot of opportunities to really discover content that is funny or entertaining that engages you outside of the sphere of content that you're trying to, uh, you're trying to, to, to watch. So for example, if people don't watch WoW content, they would never see my videos. But there are plenty of people right now that are watching my stream, plenty of people that are watching my stream that don't play WoW. That's the difference. That right there is the difference. I uh, started watching around the same time Nighthold. Yeah, yeah, Nighthold was a long fucking time ago, man. And uh, that's me. Yeah, there's a lot of people. I play RuneScape. Yeah, but on my, uh, my YouTube videos, it didn't happen that way because discoverability was completely different. And also the focus of my, uh, of my content was different too. And that's why I changed the focus of my content whenever I, I went over and I did stuff on my stream, right? Of course. Uh, I think that it's a, a mistake uh, to ever take, take a... It's like if you act one way on radio, you act another way on television. You act one way with your mom, you act another way with your girlfriend. I'd hope. So, um... Obviously, you have to, like, for different mediums of entertainment, you have to act differently, right? And that, that's the point that I'm making, right? And, uh, anyway. So, that's basically what happened. But, yeah, on YouTube, I obviously started from zero. I had, like, you know, I was, like, noteworthy a little bit for, like, my messy room. But, like, for the most part, nobody really knew who I was, right? And so, I had to start from, from zero. And uh, then, after that, I started building up my community. And whenever I hit 1,000 viewers on, uh, on Twitch, I had, like, I think 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. Right, but I remember on Twitch I had more I had more viewers than I had uh, I had followers, so it was a pretty big stream. Hmm. But yeah, like I think a lot of people have a really hard time getting discovered on Twitch, and I also don't really think I don't even know if that's Twitch's problem. Like I, I really don't even know if that's a problem that Twitch should try to solve, uh, because like obviously I I, I don't know. I really, I don't know. And that's the answer. Some partner streamers over 10k followers get only 20, 20 viewers. Well, why is that, Astronomer? Here's why it is. is because a lot of those people have uh, connections to like an esports organization. Uh, they work at Twitch. They work in another company. And there are plenty of other organizations that facilitate partnerships in ways that the person would not be able to own the, earn the partnership on their own. And uh, that's why. A lot of people found you through Classic High. Pretty amazing, your growth. Yeah, it's been crazy, dude. I think also, like, people want to watch WoW content now, which is fucking great. Uh, yeah, I, I love that. We play a different game, and, uh, the viewership, uh, didn't translate. Well, yeah, that's also another thing, is that if you play, like, that's the, that's the problem with gameplay streamers, is that if you play another game, it's very hard for you to get that viewership to translate over. It's like, so if you're really, really good at Fortnite, for example, and then you go play another game, and people watch you because you're really good at Fortnite, that, that's a... If the reason why they're watching you is, for, is because you're good at a game and you stop playing that game, logically, they would stop watching you, right? So that's why you see people who are, uh, you know, playing other games and they swap over to like another game, like playing one game and swap over to another game. They lose like a huge amount of viewership because of that reason. Uh, that's the whole thing. Uh, let's see, the WoW stream uh, section was losing viewers at an increasing rate the last two days you didn't stream. <laughs> Well, I think that's just a matter of, like, classic hype, just kind of, uh, you know, going, like, normalizing. So, uh, I, I don't know if that's really because of me. I, I don't think that it is. But, you know, it's very flattering that you think so. Uh, can you please level, what is this here? Please level up your blacksmithing. I need to do that soon. Is WoW an ideal game to stream due to the nature of its gameplay? I think WoW is really good. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think WoW is a really good stream game. Uh, it's a good streaming game for people that are, like, kind of, uh you know, a mix between personality streamers and, uh, like, gameplay streamers. Because you have gameplay, but the gameplay is kind of, like, it's, like, secondary, I think, for a lot of people. And I think that's why, uh, yeah, you see yourself going down to 23k of Andy? Well, of course, yeah. I mean, of course my, my stream is going to lose viewers over time, right? Of course. Uh, I mean, because you can't look at, at a... It's, like, literally every single stream in the history of streams has that happen. You have the high points, you have the low points, right? I mean, is my stream going to be down at, like and be dead at 30k Andy again? Yeah, I, I guess I'm going to have a dead 30k, 20k Andy stream again. Uh, at some point, yeah, that happens to literally every single streamer, even Ninja. Every streamer sees highs and lows, and that's the way that it goes. You can't be too upset about that.
30k yeah dead 30k stream no no really i mean it, it's i think that a stream is like really big if you get to like a thousand viewers i would say a thousand viewers that's where it's like okay now you're popping off now you're big uh how many subs do you have i have like 28k subs right now so uh doing pretty good yeah 28k andy there you go yeah i was 29k stream dying by the way it's too bad uh, I, I don't really care. Like, I, it would be cool to hit 30K, but then I feel like if I ever went, like, kind of low, like, really, really far below that, I'd always think, oh, man, you know, I had 20K before, and now I don't even have this, you know, or 30K before, and now I don't know this. I, I don't know. I feel like that's just it. I, I try not to worry too much about, like, hitting milestones and stuff like that. Uh, I've never really been too, uh, too into that kind of stuff. I think 35K is the highest sub count currently on Twitch held by Montana Black. I don't know about that. I have no idea. I think there's probably... If, if I got to be, like, the highest subscribed stream, I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, but it's it's not a it's not a big deal to me. Like, it's really not. I mean, like, yeah, obviously it would be really big. But it's not something that I sit around and I, I dream and I hope about. You know what I mean? It's just like, okay, that would be really cool. Because uh, Ninja had, like, 280k subs. Well, why did Ninja have that many subs? Right? Was it sub botting? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't think that... I Honestly, I don't even think that he knows. I don't even think that he has any idea why he had that, that many subs. Drake? Well, he had a lot of subs before then, too. I think that, honestly, it was because of the Twitch Prime thing on Fortnite. And because Ninja was, like, the most known post person in Fortnite, then they just basically all gave their subs to Ninja. But I remember, like, back in the day, he would just get, like, thousands of subs a minute. It was like, what the fuck? He'd get, like, 8,000 subs in a day. Like, even for his viewer count and everything, that still didn't really make any sense. I still don't even know how that happened. Uh, Mixer gives free subs to Ninja. Well, of course they do. He's like the only streamer they have. Like, that's the problem with Mixer, right? Is that they don't have a streamer ecosystem. They just have Ninja. Like, it, it's like you can't take... It's like basically... Imagine taking a fish out of the ocean and then putting it in an aquarium. You need to have an ecosystem in order for that fish to be able to continue to grow and uh, be the same, like, the size fish and be as healthy as it was. And, and the problem, right, is that... Uh, uh, on Twitch, right, you have, like, the entire ecosystem. Whereas uh, on Mixer, you just have, like, Ninja. Or you just have, like, you know, some other random person, right? You just have Alex or somebody like that. That doesn't... Uh, Mixer interface is horrible? Well, maybe, but, like, I, it doesn't matter. Like, the reason why people like Mixer is because they're mad about Twitch, right? And I think that that's a big problem that Mixer has. Is that Mixer's main audience of people are people who have been banned from Twitch. Like, that's... That's not a very good place to start whenever you're trying to build a community, right? Uh, most of the people that are streaming on Mixer uh, have streamed on Twitch, and there's a reason why they're streaming on Mixer. And many of them, it's not because they're paid millions of dollars for it, like Ninja was. Does looking after your mom motivate you? Um, I mean... I, I don't know about motivating me, right? I, I don't know if that's really the right word. I mean, she goes... So here's the thing, right? Is that she... You know, like Amazon Prime, you know, it's actually not just about Twitch Prime, right? There's like this whole other thing where you can get stuff out of Amazon Prime from like, uh, you know, the, these different systems and everything like that. Well, my mom, my mom spends a lot of money on Amazon, right? Like we have, think about like, we get probably 20 or 30 boxes uh, every two weeks, I'd say. Like I probably get like 10 boxes every week. Uh, of stuff that she orders to the house. Of uh, just like random stuff that she's wanted. She's like, ah, I want this. Let's buy it. And I'm like, okay, sure. Why not? Right? And no, she buys a lot of shit. And so, yeah, be be certain that your donation money is going towards that. Uh, that's basically it, man. Uh, did you give her your Prime? No, she didn't even give me her Prime. I had to make her, I had to give her to make a fucking Twitch account and Twitch Prime to my fucking stream, dude. Uh, now that she's wasting money? No, she's not. It makes her happy. Like, my mom, whenever I was younger, would buy me stupid shit that I didn't need, and it made me happy. I don't care. Yeah, that, that, that's the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter what the, what the object is, you know? Uh, it's completely irrelevant. Uh, so you're buying happiness? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, you can absolutely... In a lot of ways, you can buy happiness. Don't let anybody tell you that's not fucking true, okay? Like, if I ever drive down the fucking street and I see a guy in a convertible BMW, it's always a 55-year-old dad with a smile on his fucking face. 
Okay, there's plenty of things that can make people happy that require money. Now, can you... So I think that money... Yeah, I, there, there are a lot of ways that money can make you happy. But there are a lot of ways that money can actually not make you happy. So it's like, for example, if you think that you need money to be happy, like this is something I used to think, right? A long time ago, right? Is like, I, I envy people who money is their biggest problem. Like my problems are, I, I think, a lot worse than, than money, for example, right? And uh, whenever you get older, you, you, you'll you realize this. And it, it's kind of, it's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. And a lot of my other friends are kind of the same way. Whereas, like, they don't need to, uh, okay, buddy, no, no, this isn't something, you don't need to be making a million dollars a year to have this uh, this realization. You you, you don't. Uh, it, it happens to most people whenever they just get, like, a decent job. Uh, all my friends, we've talked about this before, they, they all feel the same way. Some of my friends, like, most of my friends do have very good jobs, right? And uh, not, like, ridiculously good jobs, but they make probably, like, I don't know, like, 80, 120, $150,000 a year. So it's not like they're, like, super fucking rich, but they have very good jobs and, uh, and good careers. And they've said the same thing, right? Like after you get through that, then you have like other problems with like, you know, your family and, you know, like your parents getting older and, you know, like planning for your entire life. And then you have like health scares, right? It's like, instead of like your parents or your grandpa getting sick, it's fucking you. And, you know, it's like that kind of shit is, a, it, it, it gets you down, man. It gets you down. And there's no amount of money in the world that's gonna change that. Uh, and, and that's the truth, right? That's what matters. Now I understand this is kind of hard for people who are younger to understand because Usually, uh, whenever I was younger, I felt the same way. Money was my main problem. Like, money was my limiting variable in my entire life. That was the one thing that I needed. That was the one thing that I wanted. If I had money, this problem would be solved. If I had money, this problem would be solved, etc. right? And then as I get older, uh, you know, I, I feel like there are new problems. And, and money makes it easier to deal with those new problems, but it doesn't make the problems go away. Uh, I think that's really the difference. Uh, where people can be uh, unhappy, yeah. Uh, I mean, four years ago, right? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, somewhere around there, like, I don't know, like, four or five years ago, something like that, sure. Yeah. Uh, Cherry Black's Barbecue equals happiness. I, I actually would love to go to these different barbecue places here in Austin and, uh, live stream myself going there. Uh, I, it's been an idea of mine that I've wanted to do for a long time, but I haven't really ever had the, uh, the motivation to really make it happen. So we'll see, that, we'll see what happens from a rich point of view. Well, I mean, the thing is, like, I grew up very, very poor, right? So I've seen... I've had both things happen, right? And also, like, I, I feel like it's also a matter of age. And uh, age does matter a lot. Because, like, as you get older, like, your problems that you have are kind of different. And uh, I, I wish that the only problem that I have was money, right? Uh, like, if I could go back and replace all my problems now with all the problems that I have, uh, I, I had then, I would do it in a heartbeat, right? Like, let me say that. I, I would do it in a heartbeat. Uh, now, obviously, everybody's different, but that, that's my uh, that's my take on it.